Welcome back to another Sports Night in Quarantine. I'm Delaney Barrow, and today I'm joined by Kennedy Gooden. Kennedy is a former Eagle Eye sports reporter who is set to graduate in August. Today we're going to be talking about how the coronavirus affected Kennedy's plans after graduation, how she's been keeping up with her craft during this sports hiatus, and also just some current Auburn headlines. So let's get into it. Kennedy, you're supposed to graduate and get your diploma in August. How has COVID-19 affected any plans leading up to this? Yeah, so uh, COVID-19 has affected me a lot. I was actually supposed to walk in May and then just intern during the summer and just kind of get my diploma by mail. And so that was a big change. And um, I was supposed to be interning in New York this summer, but uh, obviously New York is going through it a lot with COVID-19. And so that was a big change. That internship got canceled. So when I found out that was canceled, I was really stressed out because I still needed that internship to graduate because that's a requirement for journalism students um, at Auburn. So I was just kind of like, am I going to be able to graduate? Do I have to wait until the fall? Um, which I didn't want to do. I didn't want to be held back any longer. So I ended up, I had a contact that I met through someone. And so I ended up asking her if they needed help with their radio station, which is uh, the Sound of Mobile and encompasses four different radio stations. And so she said, yeah. So I was just like, okay. So it was just like a miracle because I was actually like, pretty upset about everything, just like everyone else, because, you know, you have these plans, and then obviously, like, you know, they just kind of get shattered, so I ended up doing that, and so I start interning with them, which is the Sound of Mobile on Wednesday, so that's exciting, um, but yeah, it definitely changed my plans a lot, yeah. That's awesome that it all worked out, and that you get to stay pretty close to home for the internship. Mm -hmm. So how have you been, I guess, preparing for your internship and especially with the lack of sports just keeping up with your craft yeah so recently i like went through all my courses that i took at auburn and like on canvas and just like the different sheets that like i had for my sports reporting classes and just regular reporting classes i printed all those out and i created a binder so that i can still remember everything that i learned like when it comes to like ap style I um, obviously have the big book that we all have um, for that um, and just sports tips on writing like feature stories and things like that. Um, so I made a binder. I've been reading news, um, staying up to date on Twitter with everything that's going on in both sports and just with news with in terms of like the pandemic. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all I've been doing. I've been watching a lot of Netflix, so that doesn't really help me with my crap, but definitely keeps me entertained with nothing going on so yeah that's good and that's really smart that you've made a compilation of everything you've learned at Auburn especially because there's not as much new content to learn from and you kind of just have to go back to the past but yeah. back now to Auburn headlines so recently the NCAA said that beginning on June 1st voluntary practices for football men's basketball and women's basketball will be able to be held on college campuses. And then the SEC released an announcement saying that starting on June 8th, SEC schools will be able to participate in these practices. Both head coach Gus Malzahn and athletics director Alan Green released statements saying how thankful they were for the permission that SEC has granted. And I think that they're going to start practices really soon. So what are your thoughts on that? And do you think that the football and basketball seasons will be able to resume as normal? Um, I think it's good that they're going to be able to practice because, you know, sports are a big part of these athletes' lives and coaches as well. And so they obviously want to practice their craft, like how journalists have to practice theirs and they want to get better. But in terms of like sports going back to normal in the fall, I'm not sure if it is just because I mean, you, you know, you've been to football games, all those people. And so I don't know if they're going to change, you know, how many people they're going to let into the stadiums. Is it going to just be students? Um, I guess with the whole social distancing part, it will kind of be interesting to see how that all works out. Um, but I think it's great for the players. I don't know how it's going to be for the fans necessarily, though. Definitely. It is good to go ahead and get the players prepared so that they're not last minute. Hey, we're having a regular season. They have to have several months to get ready for that. So you mentioned how you don't know what's gonna happen with the fans. Do you have any ideas about if social distancing were to be enforced, how 
they would be able to allot the tickets? Yeah, um, I think, I definitely think, you know, I know from game day experiences, but like reporting and also being in the stands that it's pretty packed. There's really no way to social distance if you just let everyone in. Um, but I feel like either they're going to have to kind of how some other sporting teams are doing where they're only allowing a certain amount of people come into the stadiums or either it may have to be a, just a student thing, which I don't know if fans are going to be happy about that um, or people, you know, who usually go to seasons and uh, regular games and stuff. So I'm not sure, but I definitely think it can't be the same. I think it's going to be a long time before we go back to normal, unfortunately. Yeah, you bring up a really good point about just students being allowed, because obviously sports are a huge part of college experience, but that raises the question about alumni who donate money to the school. They're not going to be happy if they don't get to go to the games, so that is an issue that's going to need to be resolved if social distancing has to be implemented at the games. But recently, Kaylin Newton, Cam Newton's younger brother, just committed to Auburn as a graduate transfer. So do you think that he is going to leave a mark on the program like his brother did? And what expectations do you have for the football team in general this year? Yeah, I definitely think um, I'm glad to hear that Kaylin uh, is coming to Auburn and he committed. Um, I think that's exciting. I definitely think it's going to be a lot of comparison between him and Cam Newton, obviously, because Cam Newton was literally worshipped on Auburn's campus when he was here. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of comparison with that. Um, it's also going to be a lot of talk with the whole quarterback thing with Bo Nix being a star. And um, obviously Auburn season didn't go as fans wanted to last time, last year, but I definitely think Bo Nix overall isn't a bad quarterback. I think he's a good quarterback and um, he's won awards to kind of show for that. So it'll be interesting to kind of see that battle. It's kind of almost – I guess in a way kind of like a, a remix on what happened last year with like Bo Nix and um, the whole quarterback thing last season. So it'll be interesting to see that. I think fans are going to obviously expect him to play because it's Cam Newton's little brother, but we'll just have to see how he does and how coach Gus Malzahn says how he does and practices and things like that. Yeah, it definitely will be another quarterback competition like last year between Bo Nix and Joey Gatewood before he decided to transfer. But do you think that this year's team is going to be more offensive driven with that quarterback battle, especially because we lost some huge defensive players this year? Yeah, I definitely think offensively we're going to improve as a team. Um, and I definitely think Kaylin coming is definitely going to add a new perspective on the game that we play. So I definitely think we're going to be better in terms of offensively. We did lose a lot of players uh, to the draft defensively. So It'll be interesting to see, because I know Auburn was known for having a really great defense, so kind of just to see that dynamic change, yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. And on the topic of football season starting regularly, so many people raise the question of students need to be on campus in classes in order to have a football season. What are your thoughts on that, and do you think it's possible to just have athletes on campus and still have a regular football season? Um, I think it's possible just to have athletes on campus. Do I think students and people are going to be happy about that? No. But I also think um, we all have to realize that we're not in, we're living in crazy times right now. And it's just going to have to be a lot of adjusting for things to get better. Um, I personally believe, I mean, I would love for students to be able to go back on campus. Auburn's a great place uh, to be and I definitely miss walking on campus and experiencing classes but I just don't know how they're going to do it so I'm interested even with me graduating in August to see how that's going to work with graduation and all those people with the commencements and things like that so hopefully um, in the next couple months we'll kind of have more clarity on how things are going to be for students because I know a lot of people are going to graduate school too so that's like a question on whether they'll be able to be on campus. Yeah we're definitely going to need some clarity in the upcoming months but I think, like you said, um, students wouldn't really be happy if athletes were the only people on campus, just because there is such a close balance between athletics and academics that come with going to a university. And if the athletes were the only people on campus, it would be fairly easy for them to maintain social distancing if they stay in their dorms 
and that just enforces that each of them has a certain living space. But I think it would be hard because the concern has been raised that if the athletes are on campus and they play in the stadium, what's stopping people from tailgating? And tailgating and Saturdays at Jordan Hare are a huge part of Auburn football. And obviously people can put up signs and everything, but it's just not the same. And if they can't tailgate on campus, then they're probably just going to find another place to do that. So do you have any thoughts on the issue of tailgating and those crowds of people? Yeah, I didn't I actually didn't think about tailgating until you brought it up. I totally forgot that was a thing, but you raised a really good point. Yeah, I mean, I definitely could see people, you know, if they're not allowed in the uh, stadium um, to just tailgate and to, you know, be able to do what they've been doing. Because you kind of see that now that people, like, even though things are opening back up, people are kind of living like how it was before and not really like, you know, having those precautions and stuff. So yeah, I think people at the end of the day are going to do what they want to do. Um, unfortunately, I think the only way to really regulate that, they're going to maybe have to enforce it more strictly, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting to see if people are going to try to tailgate because, you know, people love football, especially in the SEC. So it'll be interesting, definitely. Yeah, if it doesn't go on as normal, football season is definitely going to look completely opposite than normal. So hopefully it'll look similar, but like you said, time will only tell the clarity. So what about basketball? And we lost obviously tons of seniors this year. Season got cut short. They didn't live up to what they hoped to achieve after going to the final four the previous year. There have been tons of big name commits. What are your thoughts on the expectations that Auburn basketball has this upcoming year? Yeah, so um, with basketball, I think it's going to probably be harder just because basketball starts later in the fall. And I don't know, there's been talks about like there being possibly a second wave, like when it gets a little bit cooler outside and things like that. Um, so I think that's another thing that will just kind of be like time will tell, just seeing how like the first months of the fall semester go. Um, I would hope for basketball to come back. Um, I was looking forward to, you know, Auburn participating in the tournament this year and, you know, hopefully being able to bounce back. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really crazy because I love basketball personally. So I was really looking to, forward to March Madness and just obviously watching the NBA and things like that. So it'll definitely, um, it'll be interesting. And again, with just, you know, there was lines out the door for basketball. So People are going to want to go to basketball games. It's definitely getting the hype. So it'll be interesting to see if they um, – so if we're still going to be having to social distance during that time and how they're going to regulate that with lines. And then also the Auburn Arena, the student section isn't really big. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. But I'm hoping things get better by then. I hope so too. And like you said, the lines, people would wake up hours before tip-off in order to get a seat because – you don't get specific tickets at Auburn for the basketball games. It's the first so many people that they let in are allowed to sit in the lower seating. And then from there, they're allowed to go to the standing room. And after that, they just stop allowing people. Do you think that they might consider a lottery system this year if the circumstances have to be different? Yeah, I definitely could see that. Um, I think that would be helpful to have it. Again, will people be happy about it? Probably not. But it's just kind of, I think oh, this whole semester coming up is going to have to be about compromising and making sure that people are safe um, and, you know, students don't get sick and also faculty and players as well and coaches. So um, I think it's just, you know, if people really want sports to happen, they're going to have to accept that it's not going to be the way that we want it to be. You know, it's not going to be the traditional route, but um, it's definitely going to be a safer route, I feel, if they did like a lottery system. I agree, especially if it comes down to not being able to fill Auburn Arena to its capacity, the lottery would be at least somewhat fair way of giving out those tickets. But since the NCAA did not grant an extra semester or year of eligibility to the winter sport athletes, but the spring, so Auburn softball, um, baseball, those athletes, they get an extra semester to play or next season do you think that the basketball players and the other winter sports should have gotten 
another season of eligibility? Or do you think that the NCAA made the right decision by only allowing spring sports the extra eligibility? I feel like in terms of basketball, bas seniors who played basketball who are, you know, we're looking forward to graduating and things like that. I definitely think that they should have had another year of eligibility just because the tournament is such a great time for them to really show their skills, to show their talents. It's such a big time before the NBA draft or, you know, possibly wanting to enter the G League or anything like that. So um, I definitely think that basketball, I would have loved to see them have another year of eligibility. Um, football, obviously they had their time and things like that. And so I think that's, that was the right decision for football, but I definitely think basketball, you know, could have had a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. It's so tough because the majority of the regulars, I mean, the regular season was basically over when they called the season. It was the conference tournaments and then the NCAA tournament, but that's such a huge part of the season. Everybody looks forward to that. So it's hard to go from there. I mean, there are two completely different mindsets that the regular season is the most important part of the season because that gets you to your seating and everything in the final tournaments but also the tournaments are where a winner is chosen. So there's two completely different opinions on which is the most important. And like you said, it's hard for the seniors because they were looking to prove themselves once again. And I wish that they had another season eligibility, but there's also issues with scholarships and everything. So while I'm glad that spring sports do get that extra season, I wish winter sports did, but it's probably smartest the way that the NCAA decided it, unfortunately. So hopefully next year they'll just come out looking for revenge kind of and ready to prove the, be ready to prove themselves again. But, yeah, I yeah, definitely. But thank you so much for sharing all of your opinions. I love getting to talk to you and just it's so incredible how you've been keeping up with everything and also even though your plans changed that it's still all going to work out for you. And I wish you the best with your internship. And thanks again for joining me.